welcome back to my channel and welcome to my Reading Rush TBR for Reading Rush 2020. I am so excited for this because not only is the Reading Rush a great readathon that is put on by some amazing booktubers, which of course I will have the announcement video down below in the description so if you want to participate, go right on ahead. But the Reading Rush is also very special for me because filming the Reading Rush Readathon was like the third video I ever posted on my channel. So that's kind of how I mark like a year on booktube and so uh, because of that, well I'm about to celebrate um, one year on booktube and I am very excited for that because it's kind of hard to believe that I've been on booktube for a year. Um, especially since, you know, it, or it's my first year, so it's, I've been figuring so many things out, like what kind of videos I want to post, and like kind of how I fit into a booktube community, and things like that, and I still don't have it all sorted out. Not at all, like I'm not posting as many videos as I was hoping I would. I'm definitely hoping to, I'm making plans to change that, and to post more videos, and post more fun videos, and more, um, like re single book review like I've done so many readathons in this past year and just like challenging myself with my reading but I'm really excited to just kind of get back into a normal schedule and read books normally again almost um but yeah so Reading Rush is very special to me because it's basically going to be how I mark how many years I've been on booktube so with that being said I'm gonna go ahead into the TBR for this year so I'm really excited for the challenges this year and I've decided that I'm going to only read three books because I've noticed as my trend with um, with readathons is that I always wait until like the last possible few days or few hours and I'm like oh I can totally finish it I can totally read five books in four days and like three of the books are over 400 pages. I can totally do that. For some reason I think I can pull this off. So this time I'm going to take it a little bit easier on myself and only read three books. But it's going to be interesting because of what those books are. So I'm going to get right into the challenges and finally tell you what I'm going to be reading for this one week in July. The yeah, first challenge is to read a book with a cover that has the color of your birthstone. And they put like links in their description on where to figure out um, what month is what birthstone so that you can look it up if you don't know. I, as a young child, was obsessed with gems and crystals and rocks and just geology in general. So I know, like, I used to have all the months memorized, but I will never forget that May is an emerald and my birthday is in May so I have to read a book with a green cover and for that I have chosen The Gilded Wolves. I chose this book because it's one that kind of captured my interest a while back but I didn't think I was going to get to it this year just because of the genres I've been choosing for the next few months. But I decided that since the cover is mostly a deep kind of emerald green, I thought it would work well. And it will be a book that I'm able to double up with other challenges. And yes, this is a readathon where you can double up on the challenges. You can even triple up, quadruple up. You can even do one book for all seven challenges. Anyway, so I have chosen the Gilded Wolves for this first challenge. Second challenge is to read a book with the title starting with the word the. The. I know. Like, the way they explained it was so good because I was like, oh my word, you know, turn around, there are so many books on your shelf that start with the, but it's like, depending on the kind of books you read and like, like, how old your books are, that's, that's not so guaranteed as you thought. So, for this challenge, I decided to go with The Secret Garden by Frances Hogson, Hogson Burnett. The thing about The Secret Garden is that I started reading in middle school for a classics club, and I DNF'd it because I didn't like the main character, and I was just kind of getting bored of the book, and I thought it was moving kind of slowly, but I was like, you know what? July is my month of reading classics because I used, I used to read a lot of classics and I used to read a lot of like older books but I haven't done that so much recently so I decided to throw in a month to kind of catch up a little more on the classics that I have been wanting to read and just haven't so I decided that I'm gonna give 
The Secret Garden, Another Chance. And this is going to be really funny, and I'll explain why in a couple challenges. So, moving on to the third challenge, and this is to read a book inspired by a movie or an adaptation that you've already seen. So it's the idea that you've watched a movie or an adaptation of something you have not yet read. You can go ahead and just watch a whole new movie and then read a whole new book, or it can be something that you have seen before and been like, oh, yeah, that has a book and I haven't read that. So I was pondering this for a while because I was thinking, I was like, oh, there are a couple movies that I've seen that I haven't read the book and I wanted to, but they all ended up being super long. But funny story, I was at my fiance's house and his siblings were like, let's watch The Princess Bride. And I was like, yeah, sure, I like that movie. And then I was like, oh my word, The Princess Bride. It's a movie I've seen before. I'm about to rewatch it and I haven't read the book. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna read The Princess Bride because I've seen it before and I just watched it again. So I'm gonna read the book. The fourth challenge is read the first book you touch. They had a lot of fun coming up with physical challenges and see the thing is is that with The Gilded Wolves and with uh, the Princess Bride, I'm probably going to be reading those as audiobooks, and I wanted the first book that I touched to be one of the books on my TBR, just so that I can overlap it better, and the only physical book I write ha have with me right now is The Secret Garden, so first book I touch from my TBR is this one, so now it counts for two challenges. This is where it starts to get fun. Because, challenge five, read a book outside of the house. Secret Garden. It takes place outside of the house, so it makes sense to read it outside. I'll probably end up reading it in my tree or in my fiance's backyard. But, and also just with audiobooks, I love listening to those when cleaning my room or doing chores or, you know, just kind of being at home. So I can't rely that I will always remember to only listen to those out of the house like when I'm driving or when I'm working. So I thought this was the safest bet to go. Challenge number six, a genre you want to read more of. And as I said earlier on this video, I want to read more of classics because it's been a while since I've read classics. Four challenges, which uh, is more than half of the challenges. I am reading this book, this book that I DNF'd in middle school for a club. That's going to be very interesting. I'm essentially going to force myself to finish reading this book no matter what because so much of this readathon is going to hinge on this. And I mean like since middle school I've bought a pretty cover of it so like hopefully that'll be more motivating. Also I've grown up and matured more so hopefully that will also be more motivating. And then the last challenge, the seventh challenge, is to read a book that takes place on a different continent than where you are from or, you know, where you live. So I am American. I live in North America, um, United States of America in. And so I was obviously, I can't read something that was set in the North America, and I'm totally cool with that. Initially, I really wanted to read a book in either South America Asia or Africa because I haven't read too many books from those recently I've had I've read more books set in Asia and Africa but still not as much as I want to or should be and I really haven't read anything from South America however because I am trying to limit myself with these three books I am going to do a book that is technically set in Europe it is in Paris and that is the Gilded Wolves um, yeah, if the thing is, is that I, right now, I have that down as for this challenge because it does take place in Europe and I've only ever visited Europe. I haven't lived there, but if, you know, like a couple days pass and I've read all three of those books and I still have time to read another book for this readathon, I would really love to read like 
A Song of Wraiths and Ruins. Uh, the Blossom and the Firefly was another one I was really interested in, or there was even a third one. Written in the Stars. Those were three books. Song of Wraiths and Ruins uh, was based on like African mythology and kind of takes place in Africa. Um, uh, the, the Blossom and the Firefly is about um, Japan in uh, 1945. Um, it's a love story in Japan, and then uh, Written in the Stars is a girl whose parents send her back to Pakistan, and, like, all of those books sounded really interesting to me, but because I wanted to make sure I could complete the readathon, I didn't go with them, but, like I said, if I complete the readathon and I still have time left, I would love to read one of those in place of The Gilded Wolves for the last challenge just because I don't want to read more European books and just kind of push these other ones to the side. <laughs> so I do recognize that and I am like, again, with everything happening, uh, there's been this whole kind of movement of decolonizing your bookshelf and that is something that I kind of turned around and been like, yeah, I, I need to do a better job of that. I definitely have fallen into the easy out oh just finding whatever's popular all, the, all these like white authors um so that is something that i am being more cautious of moving forward and i would really love to film a haul or film a video about the books i've chosen to help decolonize my bookshelf i also haven't like gone through looked at every single book and then been like okay, who's the author, where are they from, what's their nationality, what's their background? I haven't done that because that's, again, something I haven't paid attention to because I choose a book based on its summary, not by its author. Um, I will fully admit that and I will recognize that wrong in my life and in my shelves. Um, so if you guys want to see that video, that is something I have been wanting to do and I, and like the thing is too is that my bookshelves are pretty small because I just, I did not use to buy books and I've talked about this in previous videos that I did not buy books because I checked books out from the library or I listened to audiobooks through apps connected to my library so it's not that I haven't read books by non-white authors but it's that I'm not buying them and I think that I, in order to support them better if I enjoyed the book I should buy it. Um, so that's definitely what I'm going to be going through and doing in the next couple months, or at least trying to. So yeah, so those are the seven challenges and those are the three books that I've decided to read for these challenges. Again, so much of it hinges on this sucker. <laughs> so we'll see if I can actually get through it this time. Um, I really hope I do. And like I said, July is my month to read classics, so I will be reading other classics earlier on in the month, and that will be a separate video. Um, but yeah, no, if you guys are also participating in the reading rush, comment down below letting me know if you're posting videos to do their video challenges or you're doing their Instagram challenges. Leave all that good information down below so I can like follow you, subscribe to you, and we can kind of support each other through this readathon because it's so much fun. Um, so yeah, feel free to break, comment, click the subscribe button if you like this video and you want to keep up with my reading rush journey or any of my other journeys of talking about different genres until the end of the year. Next year I probably will not be doing something like this because I found it to be very limiting. And that was good because it motivated me to read almost all the books on my shelves. Like I've read so many books on my shelf. Um, I just found it to be very limiting and kind of been like, oh, I'm not reading all the books that I want to read because I don't own all of them. So yeah, anyway, with that, I'm going to stop blabbering on about non-related content and wish you guys a happy reading and a happy reading rush.